Hail and well met, adventurers. I'm your host, the Dungeon Master, and I bid thee welcome to a terrifyingly brand new Let's Play indeed. Fresh off the heels of my Biohazard Real Survival Let's Play comes Let's Play Biohazard 2 Real Survival. For those of you who don't know, Biohazard 2 is a game a survival horror game that was released in 1998 by Capcom. Two years after the public release of the original Bible, Biohazard Real um, Survival Horror Adventure. Getting my words mixed up there for a second. Of course, as you can all see, Biohazard is localized outside of Japan as Resident Evil. Which is uh, the one, the title that we've all grown up with and we've all come to uh, know, as the series is called. But um, for posterity's sake, I'm going to refer to this Let's Play series as Let's Play Biohazard 2 and not Resident Evil 2. Because I am a fan of the classics, so to speak. This particular Let's Play I've, um, has been a long time coming. And by that I mean to say that uh, I originally planned to do this uh, Let's Play series in September of 2018 to commemorate 20 years since the actual inverse events of Biohazard 2, which takes place on the 29th of September 1998 roughly two months since the infamous mansion incident in the Arkley murders on the remote outskirts of Raccoon City. Uh, something to note is that uh, Biohazard 2 has two new protagonists. We're departing from STARS, Alpha Team members and survival veterans Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine for two new protagonists, Leon Scott Kennedy and Claire Redfield, who just so happens to be the younger sister of Chris. As to uh, why they are here, well, um, I believe the story of Biohazard 2 will explain itself. Now, as before with the original Biohazard Let's Play, this will be a real survival Let's Play which involves two things. First of all, no auto-aim, so I won't be using those controls. Instead, I should be sticking with Taipei controls, which means manual aim only. And the second crucial thing about real survival is that the item boxes are technically no longer linked. There is no actual mode for uh, not having linked item boxes, but um, I'll just play it by ear the way that I did in the original Biohazard Let's Play. Now, uh, having said all that, I should mention that because of the way that Biohazard 2 was designed, it does get pretty linear towards the game's finale, and as such, there are a couple of areas few and far between where I won't be able to fully implement real survival. However, that being said, you know, that being the case, I will uh, I will try to fudge as best I can and stay as close to the real survival stipulations as I pos possibly can. Now, Biohazard 2 does actually have a rather interesting development history. Back in 1997, uh, Biohazard 2 actually had was undergoing a al an alpha development um, process at the time. However, the creator of Biohazard, Shinji Mikami, had decided that uh, overall he was unsatisfied with the uh, alpha version of Biohazard 2 and decided to take the risk of uh, rebuilding the game from the ground up after it was roughly 75% completed. The unfinished alpha version of Biohazard 2 has been dubbed in the fan community as Biohazard 1.5, uh, 
Whereas uh, the version, the final retail version that I shall be let's playing is of course the Biohazard 2 that's been around for 20 years now. And uh, if that weren't enough, uh, Capcom have finally announced a release date for the uh, Biohazard 2 remake for the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the PC, commemorating uh, 21 years since the release of the original Biohazard 2 survival horror game. So uh, things are going to be pretty interesting. Uh, one final thing to note before we actually uh, get started on this real survival adventure is that I did actually uh, try to get the voice actress for Claire Redfield, the original slash former voice actress, Alison Court, to uh, be a guest commentator in this particular Let's Play adventure. Of course, uh, being a famous... Uh, accomplished voice actress, uh, involved in a lot of current projects and so on and so forth. The thought of collaborating with her was, well, an interesting idea, was ultimately uh, a long shot and I will certainly concede that much. However, that being said, I do hope that she does uh, follow this particular uh, real survival let's play of Biohazard 2 and uh, gets a chuckle uh, or two as I as I flail about trying to uh, trying to survive the events of Biohazard 2. I have uh, played Biohazard 2 uh, for the past few years now. Although I didn't own a copy of Biohazard 2 uh, until 2012, but um, that wasn't to say that I wasn't unfamiliar with Biohazard uh, 2 either, because uh, I did read about it in, uh, you know, way back when, in the year of 1998, when it was uh, published in uh, PC and PlayStation magazines at the time. And although my cousins had actually uh, had played a copy of uh, the original Biohazard game, at the time they didn't really have, uh, they never acquired a copy of Biohazard 2, and so I was actually unable to, um, I was unable to actually play Biohazard 2 when it came out, and obviously for obvious reasons it was rated 15, and I was, I was only 8 at the time, so, uh, there was that as well, but I did hear stories about, uh, certain things that happened in Biohazard 2, and, uh, but this will be the first uh, time that I'm doing a Biohazard 2 Let's Play on my channel, and this will be the first time that I've ever attempted this on real survival, so, uh, I'm not holding my breath here as to how well I do, but, um, I did promise myself that I would do this, and so, uh, I am obligated to fulfill that promise. So without further ado, let us uh, let us get underway. Now uh, we have one final thing, which is uh, selection of difficulty modes. We have uh, normal or easy mode. There is actually no hard mode in Biohazard 2, and in the case of Biohazard 1, uh, the difficulty was dependent on the character choices. Um, Biohazard 2 handles things a little bit differently. There are actually four different scenarios, or two scenario. Uh, each character has an A and B scenario, and during one character's A scenario, as in Claire A, as in the one that you will be seeing in this particular LP, I'll be doing Claire A and Leon B. There is also... Uh, Leon A and Clear B, which is the other two sets of uh, scenarios, but I won't be doing those ones. Instead, I'll be doing Clear A and Leon B in this Let's Play. So without further ado, adventurers, join me as I venture into the nightmare that is... Resident Evil 2.
A bizarre incident occurred in the outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T virus, a mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. The Raccoon City Police Department's Special Stars Unit immediately began investigation. The case was apparently closed thanks to the efforts of STARS members Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. But the Umbrella Corporation's experiments were far from finished. Are you listening? station. It'll be a lot safer. You're a cop, right? Yeah. First day on the job. Great, huh? Name's Leon Kennedy. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. I came to find my brother, Chris. Hey, could you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. Better take it with you. you there. They were parted by an unescapable destiny. This is just the beginning of their worst nightmare. And so it begins. Welcome to the city of Raccoon. 
We're in the uh, shopping district, and we need to get out of the streets right away. Oh, and I ran right into right into you. Didn't mean to do that. No time for uh, sightseeing, I'm afraid. Heading straight in there. And uh, I'm taking shelter in the gun shop. Freeze! Who are you? What are you doing here? Don't shoot! I'm a human! <laughs> Ooh, sorry about that, babe. I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I ain't got no clue, darling. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. That well, at least we found a survivor, so to speak. But don't you worry, girly. You'll be safe in here. I'm keeping a close eye on things. Uh, two things to note. Um, first of all, um, apologies for uh, certain sound glitches, as I am running this on an emulator. Um, my apologies. There's uh, really nothing I can do about that. So you'll just have to bear with it as I will. But Second of all, and most importantly, as you can see here, Biohazard 2 has something that the original Biohazard didn't have. A pause menu. Where you can just pause the game and uh, not have to worry about time running out. Now, since this is a real survival let's play, this isn't going to be a speed run, so uh, I'm not going for anything here, except uh, to try and survive the events of Biohazard 2 on real survival. Uh, the man who is uh, currently standing next to us is in fact the proprietor of the, gun, of the Kendo gun store, Robert Kendo himself. The man who is actually uh, on good terms with STARS Alpha Team member Barry Burton they both share a similar hobby. I will leave you to figure it out which hobby that is. It shouldn't be too hard to guess. But uh, he is actually the one who was responsible for the creation of the M92FS uh, Samurai Edge Beretta handgun that is used by the STARS members in the original Biohazard. So, uh, a little bit of Biohazard trivia there for you. And the music in Biohazard 2 is much more ominous and ambient than the original Biohazard. The theme that we're hearing now is Weapons Don't Give Us Relief. And uh, that is certainly true. Speaking of weapons, we should probably examine the handgun that Claire got from Leon, who in the original Biohazard 2 is voiced by Paul Haddad. Browning HP manufactured by FN Belgium. It uses 9mm Parabellum rounds. Good to know. Uh, the downside is, is that it holds two less bullets uh, than the sh Samurai Edge. Uh, the Browning only holds 13 shots, which is unfortunate. There is our uh, combat knife. Could come in handy. No, it won't, because the combat knife in uh, the classic Biohazard PS1 games is worse than useless, but uh, Cleo also has a sub-item in her possession. A lockpick. I can unlock the simple locks with the, this. Once the province of uh, the Master of Unlocking, Jewel Valentine, it seems that Cleo has her own lockpick, which is uh, fairly handy. Um, one final note, I know I keep saying that, but uh, it bears mentioning that uh, during the 1998 marketing of Biohazard 2, uh, Capcom actually uh, recruited the now deceased uh, zombie pioneer filmmaker George Romero, who is famous for Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead, as well as the rest of those particular films. 
And he actually did a couple of uh, commercials, live action commercials no less, for Biohazard 2. Now while the uh, tone of Biohazard 2 is somewhat different from the original Biohazard, the live action commercials actually did sort of capture elements of both worlds, so we say. Uh, I believe that Leon was portrayed by the late Brad Renfro, and Claire was portrayed by I, the still living Adrian Franz. And I believe you can still find those commercials as well as the behind the scenes of those commercials on the internet. Although for some reason Capcom did not allow Romero to air those commercials outside of Japan, which is uh, was really somewhat confusing given the fact that, well, I'm sure they might have had their reasons, but had those commercials been aired outside of Japan in 1998, I would imagine that they would have actually garnered more sales for, on top of the ones that, uh, that they already had for Biohazard 2, because this game understandably did really well. But, uh, we need to, uh, to make our escape and looks like Kendo has actually uh, already made use of all the weapons in his arsenal. Probably uh, handed them out to the whoever happened to survive the uh, events of well what has just transpired here in Coon City. But um, I don't think that actually worked out too well. <laughs> Speaking of which, that, ladies and gentlemen, was the life of Robert Kinder. We need to get out of here right now, because those zombies will, uh, they will attack us right away. And again, I apologize for the sound glitches. Well, we actually have no choice but to, uh, make it to the police station on foot. And believe it or not, we are actually in the downtown area of Raccoon City at this point. I know the compass says that north is up and south is down, but uh, the shopping district that we uh, started in is actually located in the downtown area of Raccoon City. Downtown is up and uptown is down, and yeah, it's um, a bit weird. <laughs> There are some more residents, so yeah, a lot has um, a lot has happened here in Raccoon City in the two months after the mansion incident. Now, if you remember the um, the ending of my Let's Play of Biohazard Real Survival had Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Barry Burton, canonically uh, Rebecca Chambers as well. And uh, the star's alpha helicopter pilot, Brad Vickers, all flying off in, into the sunset, ready to confront the mysterious Umbrella Corporation about the events that took place at the mansion, which resulted in the Arkley murders. But, uh, as we've all witnessed, uh, things haven't quite gone out to plan. In fact, the very eventuality that... Uh, Chris and the other stars members feared seems to have uh, played itself out in spite of their efforts. We need to rendezvous with uh, Leon at the police station. Those zombies have just broken free, so we need to play this right. We'll run past you. Don't. Not today. Not today, buddy. Yeah, if you pause the video, you can see the uh, you can see the lovely alleyways and streets of Raccoon City. But we don't have time to walk. We need to get to the police station ASAP, ASAP. And that was a very unique thing uh, of the. Uh, Injured. Oh, get out of the way. Serpentine, serpentine. Sage advice from the Niskel. Man, 
and believe it or not, we're actually on Innendale Street. We need to get past these zombies, post haste. As they uh, enjoy their urban meal. Oh. You, you were, um, I was a bit lucky on your part, and lucky on my part. Right away. No, no! Get away from the zombies. Don't get stuck on the debris. Get to the police station. We're almost there. Well, uh, that was unfortunate. We reached the police station, and, um... Yeah, something happened that, uh... Well, something didn't happen that should have happened. There are two zombies in that courtyard over there, in front of the police station. And, um... Yeah. That's, um, that's entirely disappointing, because, um, if you reach the police station, uh, if you reach the police station without picking up any items whatsoever, um, there is actually supposed to be a, um, those two zombies aren't supposed to be there. Instead, um, a very special zombie who we all know who it is, but I won't spoil it since um, since he didn't make an appearance. Now there is supposed to be a prompt if you play through Biohazard 2 without um, knowing about the special zombie, and it gives you a prompt saying, "Reach the um, reach the police station without um, picking up any items." Well, as you can see, I've gotten to the police station without picking up any items whatsoever, and the special zombie has not appeared. In other words, I call absolute BS. I don't know whether or not you have to reach the police station with fine health, or with, um... D or depending on how much ammunition you have in your weapon when you reach the police station, but, um, yeah. Reach the police station, Without picking up any items or examining anything, Special Zombie did not appear. I'm calling BS on that. But uh, here we are at the uh, Raccoon Police Department. And there we get a grand view of the interior. Unbeknownst to Claire, the Raccoon Police Department's uh, main precinct actually looks rather similar to uh, another structure that now no longer exists. There is a uh, door in this foyer here. Uh, it's locked. Electronically locked, although there is actually no way that uh, Claire herself could actually know that that is the case. And uh, in uh, true real survival fashion, in true biohazard fashion, I've drawn the short straw. And uh, this is a rather grand uh, depiction of the Raccoon Police uh, badge emblem, which is also on Leon's uniform, by the way. An old fountain. Something is written here. To obtain the key to open your heart, I'll wait for the unicorn. Beast. Yep. As if you didn't miss them before, Biohazard 2 brings back something that uh, Biohazard 1 had, which was obscure puzzles. And cryptic, cryptic riddles. And uh, something that I really should point out, we are now on uh, Yellow Caution, which is uh, 
in the original biohazard it was yellow, fine. And you'll actually notice that uh, Claire is actually holding her torso, or her arm there. Um, there are actual, um, yeah, as you can see, you can now see that Claire is actually injured um, after being attacked. Um, this was actually slightly um, more detailed in 1.5, but they uh, cut it back when they changed to the new format of, um, to the current version of uh, Biohazard 2. But, uh, well, at least the uh, police station was kind enough to gift me with uh, 30 handgun bullets um, for my trouble. 9 times 19 power rolling rounds that can be used for either the H and K VP70 or the Browning HP. The H and K VP70, which is uh, Hickler and Cockle, I think that's that's right. I probably completely missed uh, pronounced miss said that, but uh, that is uh, that is the sidearm that is actually given to Leon. But we won't uh, know that until we actually get to the. Uh, B scenario. And the ever the ever important ink ribbon, of which we only get two, and the typewriter without which we could not save. Let's see, um, there's a computer over there. I won't examine it just yet, but uh, there doesn't appear to be anything else on the desk, so uh, I might as well have a look at this computer. Door lock service. All side doors are locked. The doors can be unlocked with a card key. One that we don't have. And one that is not here. So we're going to have to, uh, we are going to have to look for that. But, um... It's an old typewriter. You can save your progress with this. Will you use the ink ribbon? Yes, we shall. And, uh, the typewriter font is far in my opinion, is uh, slightly better than the original Biohazard. I should also note that uh, on the simulator, I have to save on Memory Card 2, because if I choose to save on Memory Card 1, for whatever reason, the emulator crashes. So I'm going to save here. Clear Ray, 01, Hall. And, uh... I'm not going to uh, save again, but um, I will show you that um, will show you that Claire's name is in red, which is um, rather interesting and indicative of well, the fact that she's wearing a red sla uh, slash pink uh, pink vest. But um, I believe I'm going to uh, call this an episode. Uh, so when we return adventurers, uh, we shall explore the, we shall begin our exploration of the Raccoon Police Department, which could very well have been, uh, overrun by and succumbed to the, uh, zombie threat that is, uh, currently patrol outside prowling around in the city streets of Raccoon. And hopefully we can uh, rendezvous with Leon in the process. As always, adventurers, I am the Dungeon Master. Until next we meet.